Hello and welcome to another video tutorial with me, Andrew. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the thickness modifier within the part and part design workbenches. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now I will warn you from the get-go that the thickness modifier, the thickness tool, doesn't really have much to it. Different modes and different modifiers that don't actually work, so I'll point them out as we go along. So to start things off, I'm going to go into the part workbench and I'm going to create myself a solid cube, like so. In 0.19, the icon has changed within the part workbench. I'm guessing to create consistency with part design. The icon used to look like this and was named Utility to Apply a Thickness. The Thickness tool can be found up here on our tool ribbon, and as you can see, it's currently greyed out. If I click on one of the faces of our cube, you'll see that it now becomes active. If I click that, it then shells our cube with a 1mm thickness around all the other faces that we didn't select. As an example, if I cancel this, click on these three faces by holding control, and then click onto the thickness modifier, you'll see that it creates a thickness on the other three faces. As another example, if I cancel that, the maximum amount of faces that we can actually select before it doesn't work is four. So as you can see, it works here. We've got two faces that have now got a thickness to them. If I then go and add even more faces, just so that we've got one face left, and I click on the modifier, it doesn't work. Now obviously if you want to do that anyway, if you wanted to add a thickness to just one face, you'd probably uh, alter the cube itself or just create yourself a pad in the part design workbench. Now back to the original design where we've added a thickness or created a shell around our original cube. As you can see, we now have a control panel on the left hand side with a couple of parameters that could be changed. So currently our thickness is set to one. And if I set that to minus one, the thickness is faced inwards. So for the purposes of the next bit, I'm going to set that back to a positive, and I might set that to a 1.5 wall thickness. Now for the modes, the only one that seems to work is actually skin. Now pipe doesn't seem to work, and I'm assuming that it would create some sort of box section, which would create a hole through the center, in this case square. And again, I'm not entirely sure what Recto Verso does. I've looked for all the documentation, I've looked onto the forums and different videos, uh, I've even watched tutorials myself, and I'm not entirely sure what this actually does, and I don't think anyone else is. So if you do know what this does, please let me know in the comments down below and how I and other viewers may be able to recreate that. So for us to actually create a pipe, instead of using the mode, we can actually just select faces that are opposite each other. So I click on the faces icon, which is down here, click on our top face, hold control, and click on our bottom face, and then click done. You'll see that it's now created a shell or some sort of box section. Even if I set that to pipe, it still doesn't actually change anything. So I'm going to set that back to skin. And now we'll move on to the join type. As you can see, it's set to arc, which is the default setting. And we've got our arcs around the outside. Now, even if I set that to a minus, so that the thickness is inverted, the arcs don't actually move onto the inside of our shape. If I reset that back to a positive and click on our join type dropdown, you'll see that we've got three options. Arc, which I've already explained. Tangent, which I'm not entirely sure, again, what that actually does. I don't know whether I haven't got the correct setup. Um, again, I've looked at different videos and documentations, and I can't actually see any way of recreating that. Um, and then you've got Intersection, which will basically sharpen our corners and remove the arc. Coming to Intersection and Self-Intersection, I'm going to start sounding like a stuck record, as I also don't know what these do and how they work. I've tried multiple parts, and using these don't seem to change the geometry. On the FreeCAD wiki, the self-intersection is described as a self-intersection. So again, if you know what they do and how they work, let us know in the comments down below. Moving on to the part design workbench, the thickness tool is relatively similar to that of the part tool, the only difference being the red colour added to the icon. So if I create myself a simple additive cone and say OK to that, you'll find that the thickness tool is up here. As you can see, this one is always active, and even if we click on it, it will ask us to select an edge or a face or body. So if I select the top of our cone, click on the thickness tool, and you'll see that we have now created a thickness around the outside. As you can see, we have a parameters panel to the left, which is similar to the one in the part workbench. However, this one allows us to add and remove faces with relative ease. So if I now remove that face, You'll now see that we have a radius on the top of our cone, and if I change the join type to intersection, you'll see that it now becomes sharp. 
To invert the thickness, we don't have to put a minus in this box, as it won't allow us to. All we have to do is click on the tick box down here, which is make thickness inwards, and as you can see, it changes like so. Moving to this example of an X joint, this reminds me of some sort of exhaust section. So what I've got here is I've got a simple additive pipe which flows along a path which is in the X and Y and just a simple circle. I've then cloned that into another body like so. I've then fused them together within the part workbench using the Boolean modifiers. So if I just hide these other two bodies and we'll use the thickness on our fusion. So if I just selected one face and clicked on the thickness, we would create something like this. So we'd have a hole going through this side and it would flow the whole way around our shape. It would just create a flat on the outlets of our pipe. If I click on faces and I click on all four faces of our X pipe and click on done, you'll see that it now creates a pipe that flows through nicely. You'll notice as well there's no radiuses on our part. If I change our thickness to a minus so that it's going inwards, you'll see that a radius is created on the inside. Now I'm not entirely sure why it does it for this, but it doesn't do it for, say, the cube. But I don't think it's actually a massive deal. I think if we were to go into the part design workbench and turn this into a body, we could then use the fillet tool quite easily and create radiuses around our parts as and if we wanted to. So I just thought I'd show you that because that's a design that actually worked. Moving on to the next design though, this is something that didn't work at all. So this is something I was trying to create where it had one inlet and two outlets. If I select our three faces and click on the thickness modifier, you'll see that we get some sort of buggy geometry. I think it goes to show that the more complex that we create our geometry, the more likely it is to fail, especially with different modifiers. Moving over to this particular design, it was created within the part workbench. And all it is is three different cylinders, and they're positioned similarly to the last error that we had. In this one though, if I click on all three faces and click on the thickness modifier, you'll see that it works absolutely perfectly. It doesn't throw up a single error, and it's basically the same complexity. The difference between these two projects is that this is using solid cylinders, whereas the other one in the part design workbench is using additive pipe. Now this may work in a positive, but if we set this to a minus, it doesn't actually change. So I'm assuming that this is good enough for a positive thickness, but when it comes to a negative thickness, it could potentially fail. So if I say OK to that, you'll see that it throws up an error. For another error, here I have two cylinders in a fusion. I'm in the part workbench, I'm going to select the three faces, and for this I want to create a pipe. So I'm going to click on the thickness modifier, and as you can see, it's done just that, and it works really well. If I then crank this up, the thickness, to say 10, you'll see that we get a major failure. And the reason for that is because as this thickness here intersects with the edge of our part, it throws a bit of a wobbly. So you'll see here, I've brought it down to 3.2 mil, and as I start to bring it down, you'll see that about three mil, it fails. So again, just go careful with the geometry you've got and actually the thickness that you're trying to make that geometry. Another thing is that the shapes you're trying to create a shell of must be part of the same geometry. So as you'll see here, I have a fusion connecting these two cylinders. So if I remove that and try to use the thickness on this cylinder here and then select faces, you'll see that I won't be able to select the second shape. It just won't allow me. So just another thing that I found that was slightly confusing. So here I've got myself a cube and a cylinder. Now as you'll see, the seam of the cylinder is currently in the actual cube itself. So if I create a cut using the booleans up here, you'll see that the seam is transferred to the cube. Now if I select these faces and try to shell it, it doesn't work. So if I cancel that, undo our cut, and I transform our cylinder so that we rotate the seam out of the actual material itself, so a little bit more there, and say OK to that. If I then create a cut, like so, you'll see that the seam isn't transferred onto the cube. If I now use the shell tool 
you'll see that it works absolutely fine. So for the final example, you'll see here I've got two different size cylinders. One of them's at a slight angle, and this is in the part workbench. I've created a fusion, like so, by using the Boolean modifiers, and I'm just going to create myself a simple thickness. Now as you can see, this piece of geometry works absolutely fine. There's no major collisions, and the parts seem to fit together nicely, throwing up no errors. If I change our thickness to a minus, you'll see that radius on the inside a little bit better, and how these two pipes blend together seamlessly. If I say OK to that, and move over into the part design workbench, selecting our thickness, and I create a body, I can then modify and create a fillet around the outside, like so. Now this doesn't have to be done, but it can add a little bit more detail to our part. Alternatively, you can also add one to the bottom and say OK. And that's all for today's video. Hopefully I've shown you something new that you can utilise within FreeCAD. As a whole, I really like this tool. In some cases, it makes the process quicker, especially when creating parts that flow, like the X-joint. Obviously, the modes and joints that don't seem to work are a little annoying, and I'm sorry I can't expand on those anymore. Hopefully, a future update can solve these issues, making the thickness tool less confusing. Over the Christmas period, I've taken some of your ideas on board, such as showing the robot workbench and 4 axis module. I'd like to show these alongside projects within the workshop, as I'd really like to take my videos to a more creative level such as projects that involve physically creating items we've made within FreeCAD. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I also have a contact email on my About page, so feel free to reach out to me with some of your video ideas that you think the community might benefit from. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and if you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. And as always, have an absolutely epic weekend, and I'll see you in the next video.